What's going on, everybody? Uh, it's time for another introduction, meet guitar uh, video. Uh, I'm your lovely host, Felix. Uh, let's just get into it. This is probably the newest member of my guitar family. I've had it for, I don't know, over a year, but maybe not two whole years. Had it for a while. It is a Gibson, as you can read there. Uh, Flying V. Uh, they're called the B2s. Um, sort of a newer. I think the. Uh, I think most of the main guitars, the Flying V, the Explorer. I don't think the SG. I think it's just those two. I don't think. I don't think the SG and the. Uh, Les Paul have B2 versions. But anyway, let's get into why I wanted this one as opposed to just a regular V. I like Vs. I think they're pretty cool. Um, they're not super comfortable when you're sitting on, when you're sitting and playing unless you sort of put this part uh, between your, your left leg and then you try to balance it in a sort of classical position. But it, it tends to slip around so usually right here somewhere usually right about here they'll put like a rubber strip that has like a corrugated rubber pad on it to help stick to your pants or your leg or whatever um, this doesn't have that and I'm okay with that because I this is I play this dude standing up or strapped almost exclusively so um, let's get into some of these features uh, mahogany body, mahogany neck, um, rosewood fingerboard, uh, pearl inlays, 22 frets, master volume and tone, master volume tone, three-way. Um, this sort of, I don't even know if it's a real tune matic I don't think it is. Um, I do have a cheat sheet here today. I actually did a little preparing for this, you know, like a professional would. Uh, yeah, it is a tunomatic uh, bridge. Uh, that's I think that's really all I'm going to need the cheat sheet for, but we, we shall see. Um, uh, it's got this, I lied to you already, it wasn't even that long. Uh, I didn't know what this nut was made out of. I thought it was some sort of plastic, but it's not plastic like a normal plastic one. It's, it's kind of a weird material. Apparently it's called Tectoid. Is that how you say that? T-E-K-T-O-I-D. Tectoid. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, it's not a bad nut. I just kind of wish that it had been black to sort of match the rest of the sort of mostly black murdered out sort of guy here. We got the three on three. Got Grover, Grover tuners. They are non-locking. Just regular Grover kidney bean uh, tuners. Six string, which is not t totally normal for me. If they had this in a seven, I probably would have bought it. Um, but they, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, Dean makes a very similar version of this in a seven string. It's the, I think it's just called the classic seven. And it's very similar, but the main reason I wanted this guitar and then I wanted this V was because it has a feature that is, I think, last on the list. Now, I want to talk about the finish real quick. As you can see, a little bit of the wood grain here. See a shiny spot there. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, you can kind of see the grain. It's a very light... I think they call it a satin uh, nitro cellulose finish, but you can actually see the wood grain. You can definitely feel it. Um, if I run my finger across the fret or the um, body, I can actually feel the grooves in it. Yeah, just smack your guitar off the table. That's fine. Um, I had a the only other. Um, oh, that's not true. I have a Gibson Firebird. Spoiler alert: that guy's coming soon. In a two video near you, near you. 
Can't talk with these hard candies in my mouth. But they are delicious. So, I did have a satin, I think it was called a satin 60s tribute, Les Paul, that was very similar. Uh, studio. It just had like open coil pickups. Um, I think it had the four, yeah, the, the two tone, two, um, two tone knobs, two volume knobs, and a three way switch. I had that guitar for a little while. I, I don't really like Les Pauls that much. Um, single cuts are fine, but I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is about them. I've just never been a huge fan of them. So, not a big Gibson guy, but this satin nitro, nitrocellulose finish I really enjoy. The only problem being is in certain spots that you rub your disgusting bare arm on a lot, like I do, um, you get these shiny spots, which I'm sure you could probably like unbuff. I don't know if you could use like a cleaning product and that would come out, but uh, doesn't matter. Main point, main reason I wanted this guy was these guys right here, this. The Dirty Fingers Plus pickup right? So the Dirty Fingers is an old, I want to say 70s era uh, pickup that um, Gibson used on some of their, I think, V and probably the Explorer models. This thing's all fucked up. Um, and it was a little bit, I don't know if it was too high output or it just didn't sell well with customers or whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm still fixing this thing. All right, let's put it on because I'm done talking about stuff. Uh, but, but anyway, the Dirty Fingers pickups, um, uh, kind of a cool thing. Not super um, common anymore, but uh, Tom DeLong of the band Blink-182, uh, Boxcar Racer, and then his like sort of current project, Angels and Airwaves. He does some solo stuff too, but mostly Angels and Airwaves. Uh, when he switched to Gibson, semi-hollows, he had the Dirty Fingers pickup, and it kind of revived the Dirty Fingers pickup. Um, so people started using them again. I haven't had them in any guitar that I've owned, but I've played them, and I love them. They're just, they're very, I like a really high output passive pickup for cleans. They're really obnoxious, but once you put some pedals and stuff on them, they actually sound really, really good. And they also sound really good for distortion. Um, I don't know what the difference between the Dirty Fingers and Dirty Fingers Plus is, except uh, the, 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 paint, the paint on here is silver instead of gold. And, uh, yeah, they, they sound really, really good. And I started playing it, and I thought to myself, you don't have any guitars that sound like that. You need to get this thing. I actually left the store... Like, I'm not gonna, I don't need that. I don't need another guitar. I've got so many already. And I got back to the car and I thought to myself, you know what, though? You're never gonna have Dirty Fingers 2, or Dirty Fingers Plus pickups um, in another guitar that plays. It, it plays really well. Um, the only, the, the fret ends, you can probably hear them pretty, pretty not, not well filed down or rounded off so uh, it, it, it def I can you can definitely feel it it's not gonna it doesn't hinder me really at all but it is pretty annoying so that's like 10 minutes of talking let me get to sounds because that's what everyone's here for all right so um, signal chain for all this stuff is basically just guitar mm-hmm Plugged into my Personas AudioBox 22VSL, right, catchy, into bias effects, and then coming out of my M Audio, uh, excuse me, um, monitors, into iPhone 4 um, uh, microphone thing. So uh, let's unmute this guy. Now, uh, this is just what I call mid game metal. <laughs>
So that sounds pretty good. Um, that's on the bridge pickup. We'll go middle. <laughs> Oops. Neck pickup sounds really good. I really kind of bought it for the bridge pickup, but the neck pickup actually sounds real good for leads. It's got a very like creamy slash sort of. I wouldn't use this setting for leads, but, you know, you get a bit of an example of what's going on. This is the setting I use with it most of the time on the bridge pickup, because that's how I do it. I'm going to turn up a little bit just in case you're hearing a little too much of like the pick attack pick thing. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. good. Uh, that was bridge. Let's do middle, which is both pickups. turn down the volume let's say to about six <laughs> This is like a, a neck lead sound again, you know. Mostly it's just like, you know, riffage, just standard tuning, which is, again, super not normal for me. It's riffage.
Sounds good for metal. I don't really do much metal on this. It's mostly just like punk. And uh, again, with the the, t the 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 volume rolled down, it's just sort of a nice. <laughs> Uh, now let's get into another decent use for this is once you run some pedals through it this is clean uh, there's some delay reverb and flanger on this bridge pickup sounds pretty good I'm gonna try to find <laughs> I gotta find it Middle position. Ah, I don't like that. try a more traditionally clean setting. Bridge pickup. harsh sounding but not too bad I need to cut my nails man I can't play Middle position is actually pretty decent. Again, like a pretty uh, decent, like Scotta.
All right, whatever. Uh, that's it, pretty much, for me. Uh, this has been... This one doesn't have a name. Uh, I don't name I don't name all my guitars. Some of them just sort of... They kind of have to just uh, kind of creep up on me or um, come to me sort of spontaneously. Sometimes I ask my friends to name them for me, and sometimes I like that, and sometimes I'm not the biggest fan. So, um, yeah. Um, that's this guitar. Um... Sounds pretty good. I like it. Uh, I'm running out of shit to say. So, uh, I've been me. This is the sweater and that's the hat. I'm out.